Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on July 20th, 2023 here at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we are here to do our daily lectionary reading. I know we haven't done it for a while because we had vacation Bible school and vacations and things of that nature, but we're happy to get back into God's Word today. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you do provide for us. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your Word today and may uh, we be open and obedient to hearing from you today and then open and obedient to changing our lives because of what we do read today. We thank you and praise you. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen. Starting today with Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast and worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down like crumbs. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his coal? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture reading today is from 1 Samuel chapter 20, starting in verse 24 through 42. So David hid himself in the field. When the new moon came, the king sat at the feast to eat. The king sat upon his seat, as at other times, upon the seat by the wall. Jonathan stood while Abner sat by Saul's side, but David's place was empty. Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought, Something has befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. But on the second day, the day after the new moon, David's place was empty. And Saul said to his son Jonathan, Why has the son of Jesse not come to the feast, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go, for our family is holding a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. So now, if I have found favor in your sight, let me get away and see my brothers. For this reason, he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. He said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame, to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives upon the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. Then Jonathan answered his father Saul, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul threw his spear at him to strike him. So Jonathan knew that it was the decision of his father to put David to death. Jonathan rose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food on the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David and because his father had disgraced him. 
In the morning, Jonathan went out into the field to the appointment with David, and with him was a little boy. He said to the boy, Run and find the arrows that I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called after the boy and said, Is the arrow not beyond you? Jonathan called after the boy, Hurry, be quick, do not linger. So Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the boy knew nothing. Only Jonathan and David knew the arrangement. Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said to him, Go and carry them to the city. As soon as the boy had gone, David rose and, uh, from beside the stone heap and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He bowed three times, and they kissed each other and wept with each other. David wept the more. Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, since both of us have sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord shall be between me and you, and between my descendants and your descendants forever. He got up and left, and Jonathan went into the city. And from Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod, the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the one to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salome, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John also to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they met a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Barjesus. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man who summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But the magician, Elemus, for that is the translation of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, you, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now listen, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be blind for a while, unable to see the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he went about groping for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. And our gospel lesson is today from Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 23 and running through chapter 3, verse 6. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Again Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then Jesus said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. And back to our Psalms, Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. 
The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You know, you show me the path of life. In your presence, there is a fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And our final psalm today is Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone my soul awaits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not you set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <laughs> so, Looking at Psalm 16 and Psalm 62, how they both seem to fit so well into that first Samuel passage. If you've been keeping up with your daily lectionary reading, you know that King Saul uh, and his son Jonathan are um, in Jerusalem and David has already been anointed king by the prophet Samuel. And Saul, though, is still in the king's place and is conspiring to kill David because of his jealousy uh, of him and the way that David has been successful as David follows the Lord and the Spirit of God has been taken away from Saul, all of those things. And here you have uh, the continuation of that story where David and Jonathan, the son of Saul, uh, were talking to one another about how to escape um, uh, the death that, you know, Saul was trying to kill David. And so this is uh, Saul telling David that it's time to run away, that indeed Saul was trying to kill David and, and that interaction. But I think about what we just read with Psalm 62 and what you read with Psalm 16. Um, just this concept of uh, God is the rock, God is the salvation, God is the fortress, all of these things. And we know that as David runs away from Saul, um, that he does have a difficult life. He still has difficult encounters. Uh, David even tries to find ways to reconcile with Saul and all of those things that are available. Um, but Saul refuses to be reconciled to David. Um, but how, how does David manage to exist on the run? And, and so I think especially, you know, Psalm 16 is, is uh, one that David wrote, and then Psalm 62 is also one that David wrote, um, all about this idea of God is the one who provides, God is the one who protects, especially in the midst of, of difficult and dangerous circumstances. Um, I think then how... I, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. No, you're or, good. Okay, you're good. good. All right. Um, we do actually have a little bit of a short time today. We have other things that we need to run to, but I'm grateful for Natalie to come to do this today. But how even the Acts passage, uh, where the uh, the early 
uh, disciples. This is early in the uh, life of the church, but this is this chapter 13 is immediately following after uh, news of some of the other disciples already being killed. That people are, uh, some disciples are being killed. Peter himself is imprisoned, and uh, Saul, who becomes Paul, um, who had been a persecutor of the church, has been uh, transformed by the Holy Spirit, and uh, they are being commissioned, Barnabas and Saul are being commissioned to go out and give the word. Uh, but they immediately come into conflict with um, this magician, and uh, it, I think it's just a good reminder to all of us that even when we are proclaiming the good news of Jesus, that there are people who are opposed to that good news of Jesus because it would require them to change their lives, that it would require, uh, you know, they're, they're happy doing what they're doing. And they don't want to change because they already believe they have the good life. And so the good news has no, no impact on them. Um, and I think that really connects well with Mark chapter 2 um, and the beginning of chapter 3. This whole idea about Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That even eating grain on the Sabbath, plucking uh, kernels of grain, that, that how, do we, how do we serve people who are hungry? You know, do we want to make them obey our rules first or are we willing to give freely? Um, and then even in the synagogue with the man with the withered hand, why would we not heal someone who has been uh, broken for such a long time? The Sabbath was intended to be a time that, of God's restoration. Yes, we are called to rest from our work, but the healing and the wholeness that God wants available for us through his son, Jesus Christ, are available at all times, especially then on the Sabbath, because bringing wholeness and healing to people is exactly what the rest is intended to be. And how even after that, though, the very people who should have been celebrating and rejoicing that healing had taken place now conspired to kill Jesus. So if even Jesus cannot convince certain people uh, that good news has arrived, um, well, you know, why else will Barnabas and Saul experience kind of the same difficulties? Right, and I think when we look at that Sabbath passage, I think that that is so important when we look at the way that we interact with people and the way that we care for people because, um, you know, well, you can't, you can't heal on the Sabbath, and so you can care for people as long as it falls under these rules but that's not what Jesus said and it's not well we care for people who deserve our care or we care for people that look the right way or they'll do the right things right. or they they do what I want them to do right. um, and I think that that message is sometimes um, that message of care and loving neighbor is lost because we think we have to put some type of stipulations on when we're willing to give care well we're willing to care we're willing to love we're willing to to share or be generous as long as we can check off these boxes and that's not what that's not what scripture tells us right. love and care period right love and care period right um there's probably a whole lot more that we, we can continue do, with right. this. I, I do, yes, uh, Natalie, totally agree with you. Um, and so I guess the challenge for the word always is, uh, you know, even, you know, Saul had been anointed king, um, but then failed to do those things that God had commanded him to do, right. where being in a position of power and authority is not the problem. Being in a position of power and authority is meant to remind everybody that you are under the power and the authority of our Father in heaven, and that gift and responsibility that you've been given is to do what? Serve other people care for other people, protect other people. And so uh, the idea of jealousy or, or trying to get things to line up with the way we want it to be or anything like that is a disruption and a distraction from that which God's called us to do, which results in Saul losing the kingdom, where Jonathan, the son of Saul, even recognized uh, true humility and true holiness in the life of David. Now we all know that David is not perfect either, uh, but that concept of are, are our lives 
becoming increasingly transformed into the people that God would have us to be, or are we holding on so tightly to the blessings that God's given to us and not sharing them with others that even those blessings themselves will ultimately be taken away? So everything that God gives is meant to be used on behalf of and in service of other people. And the more we do that, even sometimes when we get taken advantage of, or even especially when we get taken advantage of, right. do we trust and believe that the gifts of God have been given for that purpose? Uh, and do we believe that even if some of them are you know, wasted in the eyes of the world, or squandered in the eyes of the world, or not even appreciated in the eyes of the world, that's not our responsibility anymore. It's, it's God's responsibility. Being obedient to the calling. Being obedient to the calling. That's right. All right. Well, well, do you want to close us in prayer? I'd be happy That'd be to. Great. Thank you. Gracious Lord, thank you for our time together today. Thank you for your words to us. I pray that we can lean into you and that we do see you as our rock and as our refuge and as our protector and in that that we come to trust you and know you in such a way that when you do place a calling on our lives or you do uh, place those desires to serve others that that we trust that um, the gifts that you are giving to us that are to be shared that we can trust you however that looks and um, that we be good stewards and that we be um, obedient to your will and that we become people who love others well through our love for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.